Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for ServiceNow Knowledge 15, hashtag no15. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signals and noise. We've got two great guests here, practitioners in IT, talk, breaking down all the trends. We have Jay Yella, VP of IT, and Matthew Chambers, CIO of Baylor Scott White Health. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for having us. Um, one of the things I love about ServiceNow, like a lot of the, the startups that grew out of the web, web 2.0 generation, are now public companies and right. have to you know, file all their earnings and like get all that stuff done. But they actually got to scale their business. So ServiceNow is doing that. Frank Slugu was on earlier. Year. Um, and so they're talking about all the things that need to get done in, in tech. So I got to ask you guys, kind of you know, check their story with you. Um, is the transformation underway to digital? Is it in progress? Is this service-oriented architecture and web services? That was 10 years, over 10 years ago, you know? So I'll, I'll in take process? A, yeah, I'll take a first shot at what's happening in healthcare specifically, and I think Jay's far more qualified to talk about what we're doing around our, our service management functions. Healthcare is transforming to a digital architecture unlike any other industry vertical in the world right now. Um, with some of the government mandates and incentives around uh, meaningful use of electronic health records and our in our plans in the United States to reduce the cost of care from, you know, now it's roughly 19% of the GDP digitization of health records and a meaningful exchange of health records to provide a more holistic form of care and throughout healthcare is the way that we're going to do that. So we've seen a massive influx of technology into healthcare over the past couple of years. And now I think what we're seeing is, okay, we've got all this new technology, we've got these practitioners and these care uh, providers that are using it, how do we serve them when something goes wrong? And so that's, that's Jay's unenviable task of how do you keep roughly 4,000 doctors happy 24-7? Yeah, I, I think of it as um, we used to deliver technology. I used to bring somebody a thing, right, and make them happy. Here's your laptop, here's your desktop, here's your new whatever. Um, we're, we're really st trying to change the paradigm and start thinking of these things as services and delivering services. And, and it's, it's both a cultural shift from both our employees as, as IT employees, yeah. but also our, employee, our, our customers, the employees that we're, that we're servicing, whether it's a doctor who's used to just seeing the IT guy that, that delivers something, um, to, to understanding that we're not here just to deliver his thing, we're here to yeah. make sure that his service is provided un uninterrupted. So I got to ask the question, because it's healthcare, um, is the technology an aspirin or a vitamin or a vaccine? And which and how would you and which technologies would you? Because I think it needs all, right? It, it depends on who <laughs> so, you ask. Uh, some would call it a plague. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, healthcare has has been largely unchanged in the way that we deliver it. Now, there's been huge advances in terms of uh, technology adopted for patient care, direct patient care. You know, implants and and vaccines and things of that nature, but. The process of documenting your care, I'm sure you know, we're yeah. probably roughly the same age. When you went into a doctor's office up until the past couple years ago, they had racks and stacks and racks of paper files. One of the last businesses, um, and so people don't really love change as much as yeah. we'd like for them to sometimes. So, so take a step back, so healthcare was in need of some disruption, and it still does, and you guys are in, looking at this heavily. Some of us think so, some of us think so. Well, yeah, it's know, right for it. You know, HIPAA, right. some say it was protecting privacy, but yet, <laughs> not letting data be in a, used in a way. And so, that, so I asked the question, Aspirin, what is the pain? And where's the opportunity to apply technology um, in healthcare? What do you guys see? What's your view on that from an, using information and being a CIO? How do you look at that? Do you look at it that way? Or is it more of, okay, critical path here, investment areas here? You know, we've, we've absolutely changed the way that we look at <clears throat> the adoption of technology in healthcare, excuse me. The, the role of the CIO in healthcare delivery has, has um, it's become far more strategic over the past couple of years because what you're seeing, the main cost increases that we've seen is uh, duplication of care, un, uh, you know, not efficient care, not effective care, and the way that we're combating that now is, is a more holistic, uh, full scale, full cycle method of care. So let's say, heaven forbid, you were in a traumatic accident here in Las Vegas, you'd be admitted into an ED, you, you, once you were stabilized, you might be admitted into a med surge here at a hospital here. Once you go back to your hometown, you might go see your primary care doctor, your, uh, your physical therapist for months on end. In the past, 
there was no way to get that data back and forth. Now, what we're trying to do is make that far more holistic, so from the time you were admitted into the ED, to the time you're stabilized, to the time you go back and see your primary care doc, they know what meds you're on, which is very, very important for patient safety. Yeah, yeah. They know what tests you've run. Allergies, that sort of thing. The other thing that we're seeing too is that, you know, as a Gen Xer, I I'm gonna drive five more miles to a, a more advanced clinic than, you know, clinic A that He's I just passed He's not really up. a Gen Xer, he's a baby boomer. <laughs> he's just trying to pass himself off. Because, because the, the farther away clinic, I can get my labs two days after I take my test on my iPad versus the, the, the first clinic that's still on, maybe on paper. Um, but it's the consumerization of healthcare where, yeah. you know, as a patient, I, I care about those things more than I used to. Yeah, and we were talking before you came out, you got a pebble on, we talked about the iWatch. You know, wearables will certainly play a factor the, into the, healthcare. The that data, data on these things is, is going to be huge. The Internet, of things, the Internet of things is people too, people of things, you know? Right. I read a book, Thing One, Thing Two, to my kids years ago, so, <laughs> so we know it's out there. But so I got to ask them about service management. What's unique about healthcare? What specifically is the innovations on the service management side? Because I mean, I almost think about the, the um, emergency room, all these notifications going off. There's so many alarms and what stuff, what's more important? I mean, obviously they know, hey, he's flatlined, he's dying. So or, you know, when, what, something, what? when something breaks in healthcare, it's always a P1, it's always a right. priority one. That's probably the, the, big, the single biggest challenge that we face. This, the second thing I'll tell you that we face a lot of is that we, we you know, our, our customers are very highly educated, very highly compensated, and they want what they want regardless of standards and standardization, what, you know, some of the other trends you see in healthcare, yeah. they, they think they're immune to it. So we oftentimes, we, we struggle with that, right? Because yeah. we, we- Here's an iPad, make it work. Yeah, right. Or, <laughs> yeah, that one? exactly. <laughs> or, you know, I want my MacBook to work at, at, at you know, in a, in a Microsoft shop or whatever, right? right. So we struggle with, with how to make them happy, but also try to stay on the right side of, of safety and, yeah. and compliance and everything else. How about outside of IT? So where does this start? Because you mentioned the business side of it, you're getting more involved in the strategics piece. That's really outside IT, that's more kind of business outcomes, or right. in this case, healthcare well, outcomes. Well, for instance, you know, here at this conference, we've, we've brought um, several people from, from outside of IT to come explore the possibilities of using you know, the cloud uh, outside of, of traditional, you know, where you would think you'd use the cloud. Uh, whether it's HR, it's service, it's uh, supply chain, or, or other you know hospitality type things, that they're all functions that you know at the end of the day, those functions aren't aren't unique to IT. Right. They're still delivering a service. They're that's still the th that's the thing. It's you know service management is not that different if it's IT or payroll or accounting or what have you. And and healthcare is probably one of the last industries that didn't go through that whole disruption of shared services and globalization yeah. over the past couple years. There's reason some things will never be globalized, you know, in our in our lifetimes perhaps. Yeah. But Jay's right, it's not that dissimilar to, here's our HR help desk, here's our uh, IT service desk, here's our payroll service desk, and, and what economies of scale can we drive now that you're seeing uh, consolidation in healthcare. So everything as a service really speaks to that microservices trend. I mean, Silicon Valley, that's all they talk about is microservices gets down to the granularity of the app level, not yeah. necessarily the silo or the monolithic original purpose, right? right. Is you guys seeing that same thing? And, can we, and what, what examples could you give around those innovations? Well, I, I'll tell you that I think one of the aspirations that, that I know that I, that I have for, for, for Baylor, Scott & White Health would be eventually to get to the point where you know, our service delivery is agnostic to the type of service we're trying to deliver. So if you need your light bulb changed, or if you need a new laptop, or whatever you need, we ought to be able to handle that you know, centrally. And, and take advantage of some of those, those right. economies of scale that, that, that Matt was just talking about. I don't know if that's uh, that's certainly not probably not a 12-month journey. Yeah. I don't know if it's a five-year journey, but you know that's the aspiration. So anything that we can chip away at um, along the journey, that's what I'm after yeah, right the, now. The vision that that I uh, we were talking about this last night at dinner is. Um, our executives and our board ask us, you know, what's going to be the Uber of healthcare? You know, Uber's been such a huge disruption. Everybody gets that as a disruptive uh, business. And the technology is a small piece of it, right? It's the business model. And so they say, well, what's going to be the Uber of business, or the Uber of healthcare? We're, we're defining that right now for kind of the, the digital consumer experience, but also internally our employees. You know, the one button of, I need something, like Jay said, you know, the, the trash can needs emptying. Uh, the server needs rebooting, my paycheck is gone, whatever it is, and we want to make that so much easier because what's critical to understand is those those folks that call us, sometimes it is a life yeah. or death situation. They need to get back yeah. to work. Yeah, and again, the Internet of Things piece, you mentioned light bulb, it's not about the services have to apply, so service management isn't just an IT function right, per it's not, se. It's I not. mean, a light bulb to do surgery is pretty important if you right. need to do that. But I got to ask the question about investment versus operating expense. You look at healthcare and education, some will say the most archaic, 
verticals, <laughs> needing the most help right now, and the opportunity when government, too, I throw in there, government education, you know, so what happened to the government, they're actually moving really, really fast. So what's happening is interesting is the slowest to move will actually have the biggest lever with the new technology. I agree. Versus, say, the pure enterprise. So with that being said, what percentage of new investments coming? Because it used to be like, oh, operating budget was pretty much what was going on. Can you comment on that dynamic of percentage of operating budget versus new investment? Yeah, we're, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to leverage that late mover advantage as you talk about, right? I mean, if you look at uh, electricity around the globe, <clears throat> the United States had it first, we're 110, everywhere else you go 220. There's, sometimes there's a late mover advantage, and you're right, we're finding that now with an, with an operating model, a hosted model, a cloud model, we find much more predictability, obviously, in our costs versus a capital refresh. What we've also found that we really enjoy is there's several things that we moved to the cloud, and I'm not you know, going to do a product endorsement here, but some of the things that we see is when a, when a vendor has a new technology or new functionality, for us to get that, it's our time, our labor, our capital investment to get the latest release, to get new hardware. With a hosted cloud model, you know, as long as we're ready to go, we can train the team and do the testing to minimize the impact, we get it. And that's a huge, huge satisfier. And it's opportunity to create value. So I want to ask you guys kind of, you know, um, um, buzzword bingo kind of round here, lightning round. Hold on, let me get my so, score. <laughs> right, right. We used to have a different term but, for that, I think. <laughs> do a shot every time we say a buzzword. So I want you to comment on the following phrases. API economy, fully asynchronous, always connected. What does that mean to your business and how you go out? Because really those are the mega trends that everyone's kind of the buzzword talking about, API economy meaning services. What is your take on those three areas? I'll take a and shot. How would you explain that to the, the person who's actually normal out there? Yeah, so I'll take a shot at it and then, and then I'll let Jay correct me. But you know, what I'd say is um, the, the whole asynchronous uh, service management function, we've seen that for years. And I'll, you know, as we talked about earlier, as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a healthcare provider that has an issue, they're not going to sit and wait for you to resolve an issue. I've, I've spoken to doctors about this. If this PC is down and I need to order medication for this patient, I'm going to go find another PC that's up. So most of our service management is asynchronous. So we've got to get used to that as kind of a steady state. We want to resolve things real time, but there's a percentage of those things that we never will. So those are asynchronous. You can't cash an answer that's needed in healthcare now. No. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. Well, the well, old like, way used to be cocaine. Sometimes, sometimes you can, but we don't always do a good job of capturing the yeah. knowledge and making it available. But, you know, I'll add one more thing to what Matt was saying is that, um, you know, specific to, to our industry, a lot of what we're, what we're being forced and asked to, to support is outside of our environment, our normal environment. Um, charting from home, you know. How do, I, how do I make dictation work from home? That's, you know, from an asynchronous support or asynchronous support. Through? It, is it through the public it, cloud? Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? It, I mean, when I can when just somebody solves that, that one, let us know, right? <laughs> so what about things like flash storage, all flash arrays from EMC? These companies are rolling out faster, faster. We hear um, trends like unlimited compute is in our future. Um, well, you the challenge is, you know, uh, have, me, latency. have me explain to my CFO that this thing that we implemented two years ago is now, you know, it's out of date, it's not fully depreciated, I'm not going to unplug all the spin and disk that I've got in my data center just because there's something that's sexier, or better, better, faster, you know. So I think over time, what, we're, what we are doing is we are, we are adopting, obviously, flashes as we can, we think it's a better option. There's trade-offs too, I mean, the, <laughs> the media, if it's a lot of volume, a lot of transactions, you can wear and tear. Right. You know, so the, but for our for our you know our growth our spikes we have spikes in, in healthcare you know around we don't see the computing spikes like you do in retail industry around the holiday season right? Seasonal, right but what we do see is when we've got development projects we don't want to build out that development capability so we're sending stuff to the cloud now we're look, the, one of the big trends that you hear in, in uh, healthcare now is called a VNA or a vendor neutral archive if you think about the stuff that consumes the most disk space it's all these images so you go in for an X-ray. You go back six weeks, you get another x-ray. Now we get 3D imaging. This thing just burns disk in an, in an incredible rate. So now we're looking at the cloud for a more commoditized, you know, vendor agnostic way to store that. So it's something that we're adopting pretty rapidly. You mentioned strategic before. I want to come back to that. I want to ask you about, again, the role of the CIO, one of the topics of our talk here uh, within an organization. How does an organization, if they have to do a self-assessment, um, be self-aware, how do I know whether I'm strategic or not for the, on the business side of it? Because, you know, Dave Vellante, who's not here, as we always talk about this, you're either spending money or investing money. 
So just because you're spending doesn't mean you're investing. Right. So that's the kind of the balance. So, so how do I look at myself in the mirror and decide if I'm good or not? Or I'm doing the right things, or going down the right road. So I'll, you know, my point of view is, <clears throat> if you're not bringing thought leadership to your, your team, if you don't have a seat at the table, which I know is one of the most overused cliches for CIOs, but I found it to be true. I'm, I'm fortunate in my organization is that I, I do sit at the at the leadership table. You know, our CEO, COO, CFO, and and the thing that's more important is not just you know being able to be there for the conversation, but it's really influencing the conversation, because now what we've got is like we talked about. You know, the, the Uber for healthcare, the patient digital experience. People want it to be just as easy to go see their physician as it is to to get a taxi or or, or to get a restaurant reservation. And who's the strategist who's driving that? Right now it's the CIO. And so that's an incredibly exciting time to talk about, here's how we want to drive our, our consumer engagement channel. So I don't know if you add anything. The only thing I'm going to add is, you know, when you talk about am I good or am I bad, depending on whether I'm investing or spending, is you know, you, you've got to layer on the fact that we're in an, an environment of declining reimbursements. You know, so right. it's, it's all about doing more with less. So advice for CIOs out there, what would you say to them in terms of going forward, doing the transformation? What are some of the things that uh, See. You know, the, the first thing I'd say is, you've got to cover your table stakes. Since you know, since we're in Vegas, I'll use that term. You can't have a seat at the table and, and talk about um, strategic transformation if your systems aren't up, if you're not managing issues, if you don't do a good job of covering your table stakes. So you have to be very transparent about that as well. You know, I've got a I've got a five column uh, IS scorecard that I show to my boss, my CEO, and he says, we want to be one of the top three healthcare systems in the United States. And I say, well, I want to be the best IT shop in the United States, bar none, and if I'm all green on these five areas, that's when I can look you in the eye and say I'm the best. We're not yet, um, but so I think it's a balance of doing those things that you got to do, so spending money, right? Yeah. Keeping the lights on, and then coming to them with thought leadership. And, and you do really need to engage building relationships, and, yeah. and a lot of this stuff is the cliches you've heard time and time again, but the CIOs do need to have the relationship to be able to go to um, you know, the leader in marketing and the leader in finance and say, hey, this is, this is some technology, would you see some benefit in this? There's build out involved. I mean, it's just like construction project. You got to kind of take a holistic approach of saying, hey, you know, we're going to essentially transform our business, so you got to think of it like a long term, you know, we're going to put the yeah. foundation in, some foundational table stakes, um, so that's basically what you say. I mean, it's not like a you know department over there doing its thing. You've no. got to do you've got to do the easy things the easy things well, right? right? Before you can gain credibility and say that you want to go spend you know a hundred million dollars on a major capital project, but yet you know the stuff that you've got in the data center right now is running. You've got to get in, otherwise no one's going to listen to you. All right, guys, really appreciate it. Jay and Matthew from the from the trenches. They're in the they're practitioners. They're the ones implementing the technology, making it happen in a great disruption environment where the innovation is needed and, and it's happening, healthcare. This is theCUBE, bringing you all the signal from the noise here in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>